How's it going guys? I hope you're all doing well out there today, wherever you are in the world. And a happy new year to you all. I've had a bit of time off over Christmas, but now I'm back with some nerdery for you all. Today's video is uh, following on from a demo I did of this guy. This is the Marshall Origin 20. Obviously this one is currently naked. Um, and that's what you heard in the intro as well. And in that video, uh, I got a lot of comments saying, mine doesn't sound like that, how are you getting the gain? And in the video, I did state you've got to turn this amp up to get it cooking and get, that's where the tone is. But it occurred to me that actually, if you're a bit newer to valve amps or you don't have the opportunity to turn them up, you might not really understand why I'm saying that and what results it has. So today we're gonna to look at the difference between preamp distortion, power amp distortion, uh, how you can blend them together to get a particular tone. And uh, we've got some audio samples and some descriptions, so let's get into it. So for the examples today, we're gonna to use three different amps. First off, the Marshall Origin, which I think relies heavily on preamp gain and power amp gain to get its tone. Uh, my Laney VC15 on its clean channel, so there's no gain at all, and just showing you how it reacts as the power amp starts driving. And also my 5150 lunchbox head, which has a whole ton of preamp gain uh, and showing you that even if an amp does have a lot of preamp gain, the power amp does come into play for certain tonal uh, enhancements, if you will, or just different characters. So just a general quick overview on how an amp gets its tone. Most valve amps are divided into a preamp section, in simple terms, a preamp section and a power amp section. The preamp section is responsible for shaping your tone, adding distortion, giving it character, and the power amp is in charge of driving your speaker. In this particular amplifier, we have three 12AX7s or ECC83 tubes, which are the most common preamp tube. And we've got two EL34s, which are power amp tubes most commonly used in Marshall style amplifiers. But as you break it down, this amp really only uses one 12AX7 for the preamp. This second one is used for the effects loop. This one is used for the phase inverter, and then it rolls on through to the power amp section. So, the guitar comes into the amp and hits the first side of this, which is at a preset level, if you like. It then flows through the gain and the tilt controls, which are over here, not over here. Um, and so, as you turn the gain up, you're driving the second half of this 12 AX7, but you're also driving things further down the line. This is responsible for the effects loop. After the effects loop, you hit the master volume. So the master volume then hits the phase inverter, which in turn then drives the power amp. The reason I'm telling you this is because as you turn up the gain, you're pushing this preamp tube, which is the, pretty much the only one handling the preamp tone, and then it gets chopped down by the master volume before it hits the phase inverter. As you turn up the master volume, you are not only pushing the power amp into distortion, but you're also pushing the phase inverter into distortion, which is a big part of that sort of older Marshall sound. You may have seen post phase inverter master volumes that get added to Marshall amps. And what this is is a master that comes after this stage. So you can still give the phase inverter a good kick in and get that compression and drive, uh, but then reduce it a bit before it hits the power amp. So you're not taking everyone's heads off. So to me, in my experience, when you're pushing the power amp of an amplifier, there's always a region in the lower reaches of a volume control where the amp's just idling uh, and it sounds good, but it's not to its full potential. Then you'll hit a point where everything just seems to open up. You'll get all kinds of top end harmonics coming out and the amp just sounds like it's breathing for lack of a better word. As you go a bit further up, you'll hit a point where everything starts to get squishy and sag a bit, which could be what you want, it might not be. And then much further than that, you really start to hear distortion from the power amp and the phase inverter. Obviously, depending on your amp, you might not have a phase inverter. Um, and then obviously you get to the sort of maximum reaches and you'll start to hear all kinds of strange artifacts from the power section, the transformer getting a good kicking. So let's get into some actual sounds now so you don't get too bored and fall asleep. Uh, so you can actually hear this stuff in practice. So I'm gonna start with the origin and I'm gonna have maximum preamp gain unboosted. And as you'll hear, this amp doesn't have a ton of preamp gain, but as I turn the master up and this side of the amp starts working, you can hear that 
tone coming out, that classic Marshall tone. As I said in my other video, the older Marshalls didn't have a master volume. It was just more loud, more gain. As you turn that volume up, everything upstream, if you like, of the volume control starts driving and that's how the distortion happened. In these clips, I've done my best to manually adjust the volume as I'm adjusting the master. So the perceived volume should stay pretty similar but you'll hear the tonal change of what the, the raising the master volume is doing. Next, I just want to show you quickly with the Origin how you can use the combination of the gain and the volume in different amounts so you don't lose perceived gain, but it's a very different kind of sound. <laughs> Next up is my Laney VC15 on the clean channel. Uh, I start low and you'll hear that it's quite uninspiring, but I wanna show you that even an amp without a gain control can still change as you turn it up. It, it goes from uninspiring to kind of squishy and harmonically rich and then eventually will distort. So here's that. <laughs> Next up is my 5150 lunchbox head and the reason I want to include this is because it has a ton of preamp gain. I think it's got five gain stages, so five halves of an 12AX7 all smashing into each other. <laughs> but I do want to show that even an amp with a load of preamp gain, the power amp still has a massive effect. And as you start low, it, again the power amp's idling but it sounds tight. As you turn it up, you start to open up the top end, everything gets a little bit more harmonically excited for lack of a better word. And then again, the more you turn it up, the more it will push and just change the character of the amp. <laughs> Thank you. 
So that was some information and some demonstration of preamp versus power amp distortion. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was uh, useful to you. Um, I'm not an expert on any of this stuff. This is just things I've picked up along the way. I probably got some stuff wrong, but I think the basics are about right. And the sound samples don't lie either. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you haven't already, please look at subscribing to the channel. I've now got dead legs. <laughs> um, and uh, I'll see you again in another video. Take it easy, guys. Cheers. Yeah.